Welcome back to Tennis Talk. My name's Cam Williams, and it's time for the weekly ranking show where we go through all the ATP and WTA rankings for the week. And we've come into the last couple of weeks of the season. Of course, we had the last week of the season for the regular season for the ladies last week. And this week, we have Paris, which is the final event for the men, for the most part. Of course, the ATP finals are still coming up, and the WTA finals as well. So we only had two events last week, one in Basel, one in Vienna. Let's go check them out and see who won. So both ATP 500 events last week. And we start off at the Vienna Open with Daniel Medvedev taking out Shapovalov in three sets, 4-6, 6-3, 6-2. And that is Medvedev's second title for the year. So he's made a few finals this year, but only his second trophy. And over in the Swiss indoors, we had Oje Aliassime winning his third trophy in a row over the last three weeks, beating Runa in the final 6375 and he is very close to qualifying for the ATB finals in a couple weeks time. Let's jump over to the WTA rankings for this week and as I mentioned no one played this week on the WTA for the most part. So no change in the rankings. Wish Fiontek at one, Jabur at two, Pagula comes in at three, Goff at four, Zachary at five, Garcia at six, Sabalenka at seven, Kazakina at eight, Kudamatova at nine and Simona Halep rounds at the top ten but we could get some changes this time next week, because in the WCA finals, there are a lot of points up for grabs. So expect the top eight to change a bit this time next week. And then having a look at the race of the finals, we already know what to expect for next week and see who's playing. Fiontech at one with Jabur at two, Pagula at three, Goff four, Zachary five, Garcia six, Sabalenka at seven, and Kazakina at eight, all playing next week. And they've all been divided into their groups. You can go check out the video we bought out yesterday, going through all the players and all the head-to-head -head records between each other in each particular group. Then you've got Kudam at 9 and Halep at 10 but Kudamatova will be the first alternate and Madison Keys will be the second alternate for the WTA finals because Halep is out for the season. Let's jump over the A to B rankings now and a couple of changes to the top 10. Alcrest stayed at number 1 with a semi-final in Basel ahead of Rafa at number 2 but Kasper Ruud he went down to number 4 in the world with Medvedev going up after Medvedev won in Vienna and Ruud lost in the first round of Basel. So a little bit of a change there in the rankings. They're very close together. Zizi passes at number five with Zverev at number six. Now Zverev has a lot of points to defend over the next two weeks. So expect his ranking to drop. Djokovic is still at seven. And there's some changes at the bottom with Rublev going down to number nine, FAA going up to number eight after he won in Basel and Rublev lost early in Vienna. And Taylor Fritz, he drops out of the top 10 down to number 11 with Hubi Herkatch coming up to the number 10 spot after Herkatch made the quarter finals of Vienna and Fritz lost really early. So a little bit of a change there, but as mentioned, big event this week in Paris and also Zverev has a lot of points to defend. So expect his ranking to drop and everyone's playing next week in Paris that's in the top 10. So expect changes. Having a look at the race of the finals now and we're starting to get a clear picture with Alcaraz, Nadal, Tsitsipas, Rude, and Djokovic all qualified for the finals. And we can add Daniel Medvedev to that. After winning in Vienna, he is now qualified for the ATP finals, which has been really good for Medvedev because remember, he didn't play much of the clay court season, of course, didn't play Wimbledon. So for Medvedev to qualify is a really big effort. Just behind Medvedev, we had a change with Rublev going to the number eight spot and FAA going up to the number seven spot. And Felix only has to win one match next week to qualify. So he's all but there. We have Fritz at number nine and her catcher number 10. They're a fair bit behind Rublev. They're gonna have to have a very good run in Paris and hope that Rublev loses in order to take that final spot. FAA can technically still fall out of the rankings if he does lose first round and both Fritz and her catch do very well in Paris. But like I said, he's all but there. But Rublev's spot is up for grabs if Fritz or her catch can have a good run. Let's have a look at the players who've gone up in the rankings for the ATP outside the top 10. Denis Shapovalov, he goes up to number 16, three spots higher than last week after making it to the final of Vienna. And Holger Runa, after winning his second title last week of his career, he now made another final, this time in Basel. He goes up seven spots to number 18 in the world, which is a career high for him. So the finals of last week, getting a boost in the rankings. Having a look at the players that have gone down in the rankings, Tiafo, he's gone down four spots to number 21 after failing to defend the points that he made in Vienna last year. And Struff, he went down 36 spots to number 168 in the world again, but not being able to defend the points that he made at events this time last year. So a couple of the changes outside the top 10. So there you have it. A little bit more of a clearer picture on what's happening on the ATP side of things. And like I mentioned, you basically got three players playing for one spot for the ATP finals. Oje Aliassime is pretty much in there after he's won three tournaments back to back to back and getting a 1,000 points to make up for all those tournaments. Rublev's going to have a good week, though, because his spot's up for grabs if he does lose early, and Hercatch or Fritz can make a really good run in Paris. And remember, Hercatch last year made the semifinals of Paris, so he is good at this event. Let me know down in the comments below. Who's going to take that final spot? 
Uh, is it going to be Rublev? Is it going to be Fritz? Is it going to be her catch? Who's going to take the final spot? And also, who's going to be the world number one by the end of the year? Because Alcaraz has got it at the moment, but Rafa has no points to defend over the next couple of weeks. So could Rafa take number one, or is Alcaraz going to stay there?